Because yeah. I'm probably going to have net new funds coming into the account this week. And SoFi is like a contender at this point. In the Wait, what? you're getting net new funds because your job is paying you? Is that why you're getting it? That's usually where I get my funds, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, the way you said it, bro, was so weird. I'm getting net new funds. It's like, I'm getting paid from work. It is weird, yeah. It's just pretty weird. It's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, getting paid net by new a business funds. venture. Like, <laughs> net new I'm funds? I'm putting in fuck? net new money into the account is what I'm like, asking. You're getting a paycheck. Fund. You're getting fucking paid. Like, uh, we're I expecting have, inflows. I have not <laughs> written any yet. <laughs> If I have net new funds entering my account and my free cash flow is positive, I will be a buyer of SoFi. Welcome everybody to SoFi Weekly. We missed last week. The stock is obviously down 25% this week. Steve, let's talk about your raw thoughts on earnings. We popped at 1170, fell back to 849. Don't care about the price going down because I'm a long-term investor. The quarter was great. Commentary was great. Do your own due diligence, but these prices are getting very interesting. I'm not worried about this because it's money I'm locking up for the long term. Was there anything really bad in the quarter? Outside of, I mean, a little bit of stock-based comp, but really there's nothing anyone can point to that was bad. It's not stuff that SoFi could have avoided. I think that's what should also be said. There are bad things for sure if I'm going to play devil's advocate. For example, lending contribution profit, I don't know since Q2 of 2021, since we saw a decline. We saw a decline, pretty harsh one this quarter, a little over 20 million. But also we're seeing like warehouse facilities are up to 6%. They almost practically went up by like 60 something percent quarter over quarter. So in terms of the rate that we're paying so i mean it's we're doing the best we can i'm looking here at financial services revenue and financial services contribution margin last quarter we had 81 million dollars in the financial services department but yet negative in contribution profit of negative 24 revenue went up by nearly 17 million and the contribution profit fell down to negative 4 million 20 million roughly let's say they also said that they're expecting financial services to be contribution profitable by Q4. That's their only unprofitable segment right now. Okay, you closed a $20 million gap in a quarter and, and in previous quarter as well, 20 million, 20 million. Now you can't do four. Somehow that's going to need to take till Q4 to get to. They might have all segments profitable and still report negative EPS, right? Fine, that's fine. I'm just saying it will still be another check off the box because this was a big dragger on the business is like going back. That's going to be completely gone away. Minoto keeps saying that we're going to get a Q4 net income positive. So I'm expecting in the end of January, beginning of February, when they report Q4, they're going to be gap profitable for that quarter. Q3, if they're profitable, if they're not profitable, doesn't matter. What matters is Q4 because for the past two quarters, they've continually said that. Who's buying right now out of you guys? I'm looking at the contracts because instead of just buying shares, I might as well get paid to buy shares because I'm going to buy shares anyway. I haven't bought any SoFi yet. I think this 25% decline is actually very well needed. I think it would be really weird if SoFi was 11 bucks right now, given the Moody's downgrade, given CPI and PPI came in a little bit harder than we thought. I think this is a really good pullback. So it's necessary. There's no reason SoFi can't be 15 by the end of the year. Apple has declined by what, 10% since yeah. the size of the end of July? It's so the largest Apple. component of the S&P. It's the largest component of total market index funds. I'm not surprised SoFi went down. It's completely macro. The entire market is down over the past, I think like, on the Nasdaq, we had like five red days in a row, something like that. Like all, yeah. all this week, what are the last remaining bear cases? Because seemingly they've all been broken down with every subsequent quarter, right? You had like SBC, you had the profitability. It seems as though they're all being discounted. What's left on a bear case perspective? So if you I look at the comments on some of my articles, you'll see some ridiculous bear cases. One of them is... JP Morgan can crush SoFi anytime it wants. Well, if they could, they would have. And two, SoFi doesn't have a technology platform. Like there are people that still believe SoFi does not have a technology platform and they do not own the back end. And in their company is no different than any other bank. The people that are bearish are not doing their due diligence, don't understand what Galileo is. They don't understand what Technesis is. They don't understand what SoFi is building. And they don't understand what they are going to be powering from their competitors in the future. I think that whole JP Morgan, whenever it wants to turn on the jets, will do it. It's like, guys, if you don't think that's that's important for them, of course it is. It's harder than they think. I think I think JP Morgan's easiest way to acquire a great 
digital bank will be to buy one. They outsourced it to Thought Machine building their digital platform. They're not doing it in-house. Yeah, I know. But they honestly should just like take the plunge and buy SoFi. Like, no, don't well, say that. Don't Wells say Fargo, that. I can't believe this. Wells Fargo just announced that they are going to do a $30 million buyback of their stock while also increasing their dividends. If you are a large shareholder of that stock, that sounds amazing. But that $30 billion could have bought you the future of your company instead. Purchasing SoFi, you would still be in the game for the next generation of banking, but instead you're losing deposits. The, the problem is if you just look at it on a, as a profitability standpoint, yes, things are getting better, but net interest income for all banks across the board, every Everything is doing great. It's really the smaller aspects of like, okay, well, how's the bottom of the pyramid doing? Where are the customer bases going? And they're fleeing from Wells Fargo, fleeing. So if I added more accounts than Wells Fargo in the first half of 2023. Yeah, Wells Fargo's at the bottom, second from the bottom. So you can see that they lost 18 billion quarter over quarter in deposits. Yeah, no, a $30 billion buyback will uh, smooth that over. HSBC gained 23 billion, JP Morgan gained 21 billion, Barclays 18.8. Yeah, there were banks that gained a lot. There were also banks that lost a lot. Bank of America lost 33 billion. Citigroup lost 10 billion and Wells lost 18 billion. I mean, these were the banks that should have been grabbing everything up. JP Morgan was the only one that grabbed it up during the regional banking crisis. Hi, buddies. What new financial products or services do you think SoFi should offer in order to gain more members or disrupt incumbents? Anthony Noto is the next Jamie Dimon. Anthony Noto, if you are watching, if you are listening, we need business. Yeah, we need, we need those business, business credit cards. We need business checking. I would we switch immediately. We need loans. We need business servicing. And then we need wealth management. Utilize Liz Young. We need asset under management fees. Certificate of deposits. Fees. I mean, it's reoccurring revenue. We need these on the roadmap. On that point, did you guys see the the change on the APY. So SoFi increased their APY to 4.5 from 4.4 after the interest rates were hiked again. They also changed something in their fine print where they were saying you can do direct deposit or you can deposit five grand a month consistently, you can still get the APY benefits. So how I read it was it's going to be benefiting small business owners. Problem is, if I don't have a business account, if I spend something with my SoFi card, I can't use the expense. That's the biggest issue. Yeah, it's for people that are still using personal accounts. Five um, grand a month is a lot, bro. That's a that's a pretty big burden. Okay, so here, here's a couple things. One, they didn't announce this publicly. This was a fine print find. And it's important to know that because it might give us some insight into how management is thinking about it because this can kind of be bugged a little bit. If you transfer money from your SoFi Invest to your SoFi Money account, that counts as an added transfer. SoFi Money is exploding right now. Even going to things like future indicators, like I use website traffic, that's done me well going forward. SoFi is doing very well. Robinhood's doing very well, mind you. PayPal is doing disgustingly well in July. But what do you look at? You're looking at traffic for website traffic from Similar Web. That's what you're using. Yeah, Cash App was not good at all. Chime was a definite underperformance. It's looking very good for Venmo, PayPal. New Bank always looks great. Ally did very well. I think there's way more. What is their web traffic for July? 13.42 million. One interesting sort of dovetail off of this is that Taylor Swift concert. It's been going on all week. Uh, it started last Thursday. I've just been looking at TikTok hashtag usage, Google Trends. The SoFi Stadium as like a hashtag and then SoFi as a hashtag is exploding. It is just huge as an event. So that's definitely going to have a boost to their traffic, especially because SoFi was doing um, members benefits for the stadium itself, like exclusive access, all of these benefits around like long lines, um, whether there's tickets. Uh, so on and so forth. So, well, you've okay, got a so a lot of events coming up. You got Metallica playing there. You got the NFL coming. There's a lot of events, and that's going to get a lot of traction. I don't think it'll change anything. There's been massive artists that have done SoFi Stadium. Well, it's been SoFi. St don't shake your head. No, there, not, there's not been like way more sells than than Taylor Swift at, at SoFi Stadium. She probably doesn't even rank Who? in top five. Who? There was that Morgan Wallen guy or whatever that sold 21 days in a row. There was and BTS. I think you're talking out. about the weekend. The weekend was the second biggest. BTS sold out like multiple weeks in a row. I think I think Taylor's doing like six days. It's actually okay. a pretty small appearance compared regardless to the SoFi Stadium show-ups that they've seen. Regardless of what the artist is, the point is that there are events 
taking place that people are paying attention to and it's driving attention. I don't care what artist is playing there. I agree. Those eyeballs are on SoFi. It's a matter of if we're going to see something different this time than we haven't seen before. I do think it's great. I think SoFi Stadium is an amazing purchase. I just don't think we're going to see a ramp because of this event. I would argue that the Taylor Swift fan base is of that target demographic of that age and possibly even sure. of that social economic status. Like some of these tickets are going for bananas prices. And I mean, people can obviously afford them if they're going to attend where yeah. the value proposition, if it's good enough on SoFi Stadium to say, hey, look, you can skip the line, you can get some exclusive access, some VIP, some whatever. I think that the barrier to entry for them to have a SoFi money account or some, you know, low barrier to entry product is going to be significant. It can, it can be sticky within their ecosystem to keep them on more so in this concert than let's say Metallica, for example. I actually do think you're right. I do think the Taylor Swift audience is much more our target audience versus the country or even BTS uh, lovers of the world. Didn't Anthony Noto on the earnings call say there's a, what is the stat he said for our brand name? Unaided brand awareness. I think that is what Tevis is pointing to that should increase right? Even if it doesn't make a crazy big impact on member growth. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it absolutely will. I just don't know if Kyle White Doc Goat's predictions, he said that because of this event and other predictions or in other sort of events, he expects 675,000 new members. And I'd probably predict that it would probably be under 500,000 this quarter. One thing I will say is with regards to the unneeded brand awareness, just just building on a mid point in 2018, they were under 2%. Right now, they he said they're high single digits. And it doesn't sound like a lot. But then he said, the biggest banks in the country is Bank of America, JP Morgan's, they're at 30%. If you think about that, it's quite insane because SoFi is a company with like 6 million users and they have one third the brand awareness of something like a JP Morgan across the entire country. The ratio of users to the number of people that actually know the name of the brand is is completely crazy it's a big deal because again i think you guys might have seen the tweet last night my cousin asked me for a high yield savings account and i'm gonna tell her about sofi and she's gonna trust me because that's why she asked me so everywhere you go i'm seeing ads all day on facebook and instagram on sofi the one thing they have over robin hood is their their marketing and penetration is like a trillion times better than robin hood i mean they know what they're doing in that respect whenever you do garner such a name in media for example chime is big and monzo is big but unless you're a fintech freak probably UK people don't know enough about Chime and US people probably don't know enough about Monzo. I've right? never heard of Monzo, by the way. Thank you, Steve. See, thank you, Steven. I appreciate that. But so if they were to come here, they wouldn't have any brand recognition. But I do think if we're trying to expand into Latin America, doing things like hosting FIFA or whatever, or, or being one of the stadiums in 2026 or whatever it is, that'll definitely help with certain Southern regions, especially if we're trying to expand there. Knowing SoFi Stadium is all over everything does give this massive global recognition, not just here in uh, America, where it is most important now. Noto keeps saying top 10 financial institution. And when you look at what the actual definition of financial institutions is, it's the gamut from credit unions to insurance carriers to brokerage to banks. To be a top 10, last time I checked on the market caps, the 10th largest was Royal Bank of Canada at $134 billion. I'm sure that's changed since I looked at it. But even again, the top 20, they got to crack $90 billion. If you believe that that's going to happen over the next decade or two, this is a large multi-bagger if they get to that point. I mean, only time is going to tell, but he's consistently clear on what the game plan and what the vision is and what their goal is. And he's got contingency plans for contingency plans. I think they can get there because look, the younger generation is going to be the generation that is generating the most income. I am still okay, here's here's the bear case. What if the younger generation turns out to be lazy pieces of shit that aren't able to actually create economic stimulus? Every and... generation thinks the generation after them are lazy pieces of shit. Yeah. But what if what if our generation, uh, my Tanners and Tevises, actually are really bad humans? Wait, I mean, look, look, look. Okay, let's just assume every everybody in the new generation is a lazy piece of shit produces zero. Okay. Let's just assume that it's, it's a crazy assumption. Let's just do it for a second. There is going to be such a massive wealth transfer for baby boomers that are just passing down all of their wealth. 79 say, trillion. Yeah. And let's say, Wait, what I'm, do you, what do you mean by that? Can you explain what you mean by wealth transfer? Inheritance. People, People have to die. die and all of the money that they've accumulated over the best stock market over the past, like four decades, five decades is going to pass down to their kids. 
their kids are going to inherit all of this fucking money and they're going to say, oh, wait, I don't want to keep it in Wells Fargo. What am I going to do? I now have this money. I'm responsible for it. The younger generation is more likely to use a cloud first bank than a traditional money center. What if the younger generation just starts putting their money in their mattress and is like, you know what? We're going back to like. Dude, just saying crypto. Crypto. I doubt that's going to happen, considering this is the generation of instant gratification, crypto, Web3, and everything else. They don't want hard physical assets. They don't have gold and silver in a safety deposit box. Pointing I mean, out. crypto is like a, a stronger argument for you to make. Younger generations are disenfranchised with the traditional financial system. They're going to receive a whole ton of money from their parents after the parents pass away. Due to this disenfranchisement, they're just going to be like, okay, well... We want to carve our own path and we want to play a new game that is not rigged, quote unquote, or the pie is not carved, however you want to anecdotally phrase it. I'm going to put my money in crypto versus putting my money in a bank account. That's going to see more adoption. I think that's a better argument to make than under the mattress. Either that's way, fair. SoFi needs a wealth management branch because of what Tavis just said about the generational wealth transferring from one generation to another. We need to be getting incremental revenue from managing. Is this just personal accounts or is this all bank accounts? Business this is, and this is checking accounts exclusively. This is personal accounts. Okay. Either way, this is very encouraging. I think it just shows while community banks are slightly growing, you're not seeing nearly as much money flow into them as the fintechs and even the mega banks aren't seeing from a percentage basis. This is showing off the new account opens. It's not saying yeah, that fintech it, is the biggest. It's not dollar value. It's just the account opens. But still, that is very encouraging for the simple fact that for SoFi to have the actual tech platform and them be able to create a white label service for any neobank. Yeah. And neobanks and digital banks are seeing the largest growth on an account basis. That's what gets you to a five to 10 X over the next decade for SoFi to reach that level is for them to get a hybrid valuation of a tech company slash finance company. There's no other company in this space as a national bank charter eligible for a somewhat tech valuation because they just don't have the back end that SoFi has. They're not in a position to white label their own product and power the competition. Going from 2020 to 2023, including all generations, is also including baby boomers and Gen Xs, the amount of people that are actually calling a traditional mega bank, their primary checking account provider is decreasing. On the other side, for fintechs, it is also growing immensely. It's slower for baby boomers, but it is still growing like crazy. This just proves my point about where the younger generation is more likely to open a bank account. This is what they're looking for because of instant gratification. Yeah. And when Gen Z is at 11, that number is going to grow drastically because a lot of Gen Zs haven't entered the workforce yet. It's not that they're switching from a mega bank to a fintech or digital bank. It's just that they have, they're have they unbanked right now because they haven't entered that workforce. For example, this is a reason why I'm a big believer in new bank. SoFi does not land where people think they land. They kind of land a little bit higher to the top than people would think. They have very much a traditional acquiring style versus the likes of a cash app or a new bank. So this was a chart that was taken optimism from all these fintech CEOs. This was done in, I believe, May of 2023. So quite recently. And they said, give us a 12 month optimism based on the segment that you're in. And also depending where they're located geographically. North America, across the board, the macro is bad. The largest problems that uh, fintech CEOs are finding is customer acquisition. SoFi definitely struggles with that. Companies like PayPal, for example, don't really have to fight, fight that issue because they have 400 million customers. This is the biggest problem with fintech versus traditional, I find, is the use for cash. Most people are still with traditional banks, but where are people using their traditional banks is still computer, laptop, smartphone, 71%. Amit, do you carry cash around with you? Every day? No, I usually use Robinhood. Tanner, do you carry cash around with you every day? Nope. Can't even fit it in the wallet. Tevis, do you carry cash around? Why with was you? that such a flex, bro? I only carry like a 20 just in, in case of emergencies. Okay. I carry cash around. Of course you do. Why wouldn't Me? you? Of course just you do. Older. 
but I also am above the age group. I, it's just something I just don't feel comfortable without having cash on me. I, I see it more and more. More people do not carry cash. And this is exact reason of why it doesn't matter about being in a traditional banking system, because how many reasons are there to go pull cash out of an ATM when you have all these other methods of paying for products? You never know when you're going to need it. In, in case of what? Happened. What scenario would you need the cash? You never know when you're going to need it. So when Alex. I went to go get my pick up my case of Pokemon cards that I pre-ordered, I paid cash and there's no tax when I pay cash for certain things. Okay. What would I, I straight up will tell you? Person Look, most people person. don't need to carry cash, but if, if you're buying things and if somebody is willing to allow you to purchase something without tax or at oh, I got it. Rate because of cash, yeah. You pay cash. I guess. So regardless, there's less of a reason today to use cash. All I'm saying is that more people are using a card. I will use a card for every single thing because of the points and just pay it off that month. And that's more and more of a reason why banks like SoFi are not going to have a problem getting new customers because less and less people need to go to a bank and less and less people are handling cash. The largest gas station chain in Canada was just not accepting Visa or like no debit or credit for like I, 48 hours. I'm sure they had some dispute or something with Visa or something. They just weren't paying their bill. But like for me, I was like, I only had a 20 on me and I was like, okay, I guess I'm only putting 20 bucks in my car. <laughs> like, and I will say with that comment that you guys showed, that comment's 100% true. There are, there are many pizzerias in New York City that only take cash. It is such a true shame. And actually I find a really bad mentality by a lot of these small businesses to not want to take card. You're going to deny 100% of my purchase. Right. So then but, but someone doesn't remember, take 3%. There's several reasons they're going to do that. You don't know what they're reporting, what they're not reporting. I think last week, Austin Australia came out and they were saying they're going completely cashless and like people were freaking out because they were saying, oh, this is the start of like CBDCs. Like the, the entire reason they were saying is like, well, it's it's easier to keep track of all the money in the system. Number one, illicit activities that go on are all cash only. No People freaking out about Big Brother and control and all this stuff, thinking that CBDCs are not coming. Oh. You're wrong. They're coming. No, no. They're, look, the, the older generation, my generation, the older generation, Definitely concerned about that. The younger generation, not so much. The part that I think is so funny is you think that these things are going to be offered with no benefit. Look, I know people that say, I don't care about the one or 2% cash back. I'm using cash for everything because even though I'm not doing anything illegal, I just don't want the government knowing what I'm doing. I know several people like that. It's an older mentality. Is that why you carry the cash? So that when you have to buy no, certain I things? I use my credit card for everything except certain situations. So you just, you hold on. So you just feel good having cash to let you remind you that you're rich. Like, like I don't see yeah. what else the reason. Dude, I'm not you rich. Carry. Do you guys remember whenever uh, Rogers Communications went down in Canada? That was pretty huge news. I mean, they don't remember, but I do, yeah. Canada was just shut down for a day. <laughs> like, Yeah, people were going to Starbucks to like just get some Wi-Fi so that they could do work. It was like the start of the apocalypse. One of our two biggest telecommunications services had closed down, but also that stopped terminals from paying. That stopped everything. Yeah. yeah. So There's like, also the mentality of the emergency situation. You always want to have cash on hand, God forbid something happens and you need access to money and Wi-Fi goes down. What if you're on the run and all money. your accounts get frozen, for example? And then... <laughs> okay, I don't know where you were going to go. I would say, God forbid, EMP goes off. Are you guys like still buyers? And second of all, like, are you going to buy or are you not going to buy this week? If not, like, is there a price where you would buy this week? Because if... I'm probably going to have net new funds coming into the account this week. And so far, it's like, a contender at this point in the wait what you're getting net new funds because your job is paying you is that why you're getting that's usually where i get my funds yeah <laughs> okay no the way you said it bro was so weird i'm getting net new funds it's like i'm getting paid from work it is weird yeah it's <laughs> pretty weird it's like well, I'm, I'm getting, getting net paid new by funds that's... Like, <laughs> net new I'm funds putting in fuck? net new money into the account is what i'm like, getting you're getting, a paycheck. Fund. you're getting fucking paid like yeah. that is what i am looking well, at we're and expecting have... inflows I have not written any yet, but TJ, if you're watching, this is what I am currently looking at. We can have a conversation around it. The September 22nd option chain rank cash secure puts at $7.50. Generate 3% on your money. Um, that's 42 days until expiration. So that's seven right. is the price I'm looking at. I'm buying if the first number starts with a seven, that's when I'll get back in. I'm in. You, last words? 
buyer, not a buyer. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. You said back in. No, no, back into purchasing. I, oh, I'm, okay. in, I'm in so far. I mean, I'm in buying mode. Clear. Because if you I'm sold, a... you kicked off. No, 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 no. I'm in hold mode right now. Okay. Okay. Last words. If I have net new funds entering my account and my free cash flow is positive, I will be a buyer of SoFi. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Peace.